So, light heavyweights, 81 kilos. Uh, Miguel de Souza of Brazil up against Shabos Negratulyov of Tajikistan, who we saw in the preliminary round. Fifth of the American Championships, quarter finalist in Rio. I beg your pardon, quarter finalist in, in uh, Rio, lost to Hudo La Cruz. WSB experience as well. Tuluev beats Nuriandi, Nuriandiev by four verdicts to one in the first round. One of books off to finish fifth of the Asian Championships, lost to Melikushev in the quarterfinals. Silver at the 2014 Asian Youth Championships, where he also lost to Melikushev in the bronze at the World Juniors the year before. So to Sousa of Brazil in the red, then Matulo to Tajikistan in the blue. Both orthodox, 81 kilos. This replaced in the quarterfinals. Inching nearer and nearer towards the business end of this 2017 AIBA World Championships, Men's World Championships. so far. Give the big overhand right there to Sousa. Did land a little bit around the back of the head of Legman Tsiloev, nothing major. really managed to get in range just yet. Sometimes I connect with a jab, pretty much at the end of the punch. Moved on to a couple there, a bit more effectively, just Sousa throwing the right hand, then Matulev was looking to throw himself as he came in. And that was the first time that both of them had really been willing to commit. Matulov with his own left. 
too much fire on it. particularly easy to give it to either fighter. Second round to Souza. Top off his stall in the red for Brazil. Shabos Negratulo over Tajikistan in the blue. Got past Nuriadi Nuriadiev in the first round. Nuriadiev just didn't really do enough in that fight. I was expecting a little bit more from him, the reports I've heard. Second round. Looking to be more aggressive. Left hand to the body there from D'Souza. I think Matilda looking to get in a little bit closer. Not too close though. You could just see him push. D'Souza off there, trying to give himself a bit of room just to work. Looking for the long right hand there, D'Souza, but then with Tullova taking the feet back, he was out of range. Pops out the jab there. Finds from Jatikistan. a bit as he tried to jab there you saw the little skip forward afterwards weighed a bit too heavily on that front foot and I wouldn't say he's gassed in this second round but he came out strong at the start and the longer it goes on though it's D'Souza who is throwing the more meaningful punches here getting through with a few two left to the body there Lego Tulev comes back with a left hand Thank <laughs> you. 
Big overhand right there from Legba Tula. Susan took it well though. Third and final round, D'Souza of Brazil in the red, then Matilo of Tajikistan in the blue. They both had their successes, they're just beginning to favour D'Souza. Has come back with punches when he's needed to. Towards the end of that second round, he needed something and he did provide it. Big overhand right. Suja just sailed over the head of Negu Tuluev. Both of them just looking to take a bit of a breather here. Some of themselves for the final 40 seconds. Just walked onto the right hand there, Negu Tuluev, who was just going to throw his own opened out, and Suja caught him. Was looking to hold on there. Interesting. After he threw that punch, he just reached out for his opponent with both of those gloves, and Egbertulo was too far away. And maybe it's a man in red here. He's beginning to feel the pace a little bit more. Egbertulo coming forward. I think has maybe sensed it, looking for the right hand, trying to finish strong here. And D'Souza is just throwing back. Touch of the gloves at the end. D'Souza feels that he's done enough. It's tight again. Was just edging him, the man we're looking at now, just favouring him. But then Matula finished that round strongly. D'Souza, of these two, is the seeded fighter. He's the number five seed. Got a bye through the first preliminary round. There wasn't much in any of those rounds. It's across the board and you couldn't have argued really if that had gone either way. As I was saying throughout the course of it, it was a tight fight. A tight, tight fight. Four judges to one, but that's not really the story, it's the scores. Two rounds to one with every single judge. So Negbatulov, it is. 
who goes through and he will fight the winner of our next fight Here, just walking down the concourse to my left hand side. He had a fight earlier on at flyweight. He got through. That was in ring A. So in light heavyweight as well, Damir Plantic of Croatia up against Carlos Mina of Ecuador. Plantic, the only Croatian fighter here. Bronze of the European Championships. Went out to Muslim Kazimagomedov of Russia. Good win, so against Radislav Pantelev and Mikhail Dachalievets. And we saw him in the first preliminary round where he beat Jibin Huang pretty comfortably by unanimous decision. of the American Championships, lost to Julio La Cruz. He does have a win against La Cruz, though. That was back in Season 5 of World Series Boxing. Quarter-finalist at the Rio Olympic Games and has competed in numerous other American Championships and Pan-American Games as well, but not meddling. Amina, a seeded fighter, the fourth seed. in the other ring at the moment. in the red here, Mina in of, of Ecuador in the blue. Mina just happy enough to circle with his back to the ropes. Antic looking a bit tentative as they both are. The referee might tell them to engage here if nothing really happens in the next 20 seconds or so. Jab to the body, attempted jab to the body anyway from Mina. Again, looking for that left to the body there, Carlos Mina. Vantage really hasn't thrown anything with any conviction at all yet.
again with a jab to the body and he's winning the round really by virtue of just those shots alone Plantich has done nothing Mina with the one two there and the Croatian is just giving this first round away that's what's happening you can't do that in a three round fight a little miss with that right hand and then Plantic did seem to nail him with the left as he came in behind it Plantic lets his hands go there good bit of evasive work from the man in red just slipped under the left hand and moved away to his right hand side but he just didn't do enough in that first round really he was never in trouble but Lena threw some punches at least before those final exchanges Waiting for the bell. Round two, all the time. Mina with the high guard. Plantich holds that lead hand low, just kind of moves it forward, pushes it out, constantly just looking to try and measure what the gap is between himself and his opponent. He's got quite a kind of mechanical boxing style, really. there from Plantich. <laughs> Mina getting in slightly too close there was trying to See if he could sneak that right hand round the inside. Amina was right back on Plantich there when the instruction to box came. And he's trapped him on the ropes here and he's doing a little bit of damage. It looked like he was. Right hand for Mina got through. Plantich slips away to his right. And then just cuffs the Ecuadorian. The man in blue as he tries to get after Plantich again. Jab there again from Mina. He's got some good evasive skills, Plantis. He got himself out of trouble well there. He looks kind of unruffled, he looks nice and composed, but he just isn't doing enough. up now you can win a fight off the back foot of course you can you can be aggressive off the back foot it's not necessarily a defensive ploy you can't win a fight off the back foot if you don't throw any punches So 
two rounds down. A little bit of a fist pump there from Mina as he went back to the corner. This has not been a dazzling performance by him, but I've got him two rounds up by virtue of the fact that his opponent has done very little. screens on my left shoulder he won his fight earlier on three-time world champion looking to make it four here as is Julio de Cruz and Saga Lago, Sandy Cruz as well out in force to support their teammate the Cuban team they have captured more gold medals than anybody else in the history of the Aiba World Championships the first edition was in 1974 in Havana But uh, Wilfredo Gomez, another one, Puerto Rican, legendary Puerto Rican, one gold there. Mina just looking for that left hand and right hand and just firing away in the corner of Plantage. Again, manages to get himself out of trouble and it looks clumsy from Mina. He's swung off balance and Plantage has made him do that. But it's Mina who's initiated that exchange in the corner. It's Mina who. Now the better of it in the corner. I just feel that there's more to come from Plantich. He's frustrating because he does have these good defensive skills. He's a really composed fighter. He's very difficult to, to ruffle or to panic because Mina's a, a big, strong, physically imposing light heavyweight. By far the bigger man of the two when you look at them physically. If he could just add a bit more... Offense, Plantich. Then he could really be in business. Still on the front foot where he's been all fight. Hasn't been all that effective to be honest. If there were punch stats for this, then he would have connected with a pretty low percentage of the ones he's thrown with a right hand there. Bell goes. Plantich raises his glove, but I just don't see any possible way that he can be given the win there because he just he just didn't do anything. Offensively, he's got some good skills. More refined boxing skills, I would say, than Carlos Mina has got, possibly. And as I've been saying, you can win a fight off the back foot. Boxing off the back foot is not a negative ploy necessarily. But he threw very little that advantage.
Carlos Mina gets it in the blue corner. Split decision. 30 points to 27, that was how I had it. Two scores of 29 to 28, and Morocco go 29 to 28 in favour of Plantich. I've no idea how you end up with that score, I really haven't. But it's Mina who goes through. And he will face Negmatulov, who we saw beat D'Souza in the quarterfinals. Sounds like I'm being very, very critical of Plantic. Uh, I understand that. But I've given him his credit, I've given him his due. He, if he just threw more, he could really be, he could really be a good fighter. But he just didn't do enough. <laughs> 